Good day. This is Peggy Gunter, Special Projects Consultant for the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition. Today, I'd like to tell you about a study that we published recently called Malnutrition Diagnoses and Associated Outcomes in Hospitalized Patients in the United States from 2018. This educational offering was provided to you by Aspen and supported by Junum. In October of 2021, we published this study in Nutrition and Clinical Practice called Malnutrition Diagnoses and Associated Outcomes in Hospitalized Patients in the United States in 2018. The background on this project is that malnutrition is prevalent among hospitalized patients and has been shown to be associated with poor outcomes, higher readmissions, and higher health care costs. It is estimated that about one third of patients admitted to the hospital may be malnourished, but this rate of malnutrition depends upon the malnutrition diagnostic criteria, the population, the type of illness, and the patient's age. Aspen has been tracking rates of coded malnutrition diagnoses, abbreviated as CDM, in hospitalized patients and looking at associated outcomes over time using the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality Databases, or AHRQ. The purpose of this study is to update the prevalence of malnutrition diagnoses among patients discharged from U.S. hospitals, to compare the associated clinical and demographic characteristics of CDM patients with patients without this diagnosis, and to examine the cost and risk of hospital readmission and look at trends over time. Part of the data for this paper came from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality Healthcare Cost and Utilization Project family of databases. We selected the national inpatient sample and the nationwide readmissions database to examine. This HCUP data has some limitations, and those are that it is lag data. The most recent data is from 2018. It is also claims-based data and is only as good as the coding at the institution. And it counts malnutrition by ICD-10 codes, no matter what assessment tool is used in that institution. These are the ICD-10 diagnostic codes used to identify malnutrition in this data set. As you can see, there are many malnutrition codes and include both pediatric and adult populations. So our findings from this 2018 database were that approximately 2.5 million non-maternal and non-neonatal inpatient stays were related to malnutrition. That is about 8.9% of the 27.8 million total patients. Those with a coded diagnosis of malnutrition were significantly older, were found to come from a lower community level income category, or were on Medicare as a payer. From this graph of rate of malnutrition coded in US hospitalized patients, you can see the 1993 to 2000 data were all hospital patients, whereas the 2013 to 2018 data were from non-maternal and non-neonatal patients, which are a subset of patients more likely to be at risk for malnutrition. You can see that coded malnutrition is rising, but when comparing these numbers to um, smaller studies, where the malnutrition rate can be up to 90% of patients, it seems like we clearly still have a need to address documentation and coding gaps. In reviewing discharge characteristics between those with a coded diagnosis of malnutrition and those without, you can see that those with malnutrition are much less likely to have a routine discharge and more likely to need post-hospital care or home health care than those without malnutrition. In terms of length of stay, 
those with coded malnutrition diagnoses have a 1.9 times longer length of stay in the hospital than those without malnutrition. Also, those patients with coded malnutrition diagnoses have a 3.4 times likelihood of dying in the hospital than those without malnutrition. We also found that the 30-day readmission rate with malnutrition is 1.4 times higher than those without that diagnosis of malnutrition during their index stay. The mean inpatient hospital cost of those with malnutrition is 1.7 times higher than those without malnutrition during the index stay and also the readmission visit. The aggregate hospital costs during the index stay was $58 billion or 13.2% of total costs for only 8.9% of the patients. Overall, malnourished hospitalized patients are associated with poor outcomes, specifically 3.5% four times higher in hospital deaths, 1.9 times longer hospital stays, two times higher discharge rates to long-term care or rehab facilities, and 1.4 times higher need for home health services. They're also associated with higher economic burden. $58 billion of total costs associated with malnutrition stays which is an 18% increase from 2016. Hospital costs for patients with malnutrition are 73% higher than those without malnutrition, and readmission stays for those malnourished add $10,000 more to the hospital stay cost. So our key takeaways and call to action include, coded malnutrition is associated with poor clinical outcomes and higher costs. Hospital-associated malnutrition is likely not diagnosed and coded as often as it occurs. Clinicians need to assess, diagnose, and document malnutrition, and coders need to code for this condition. Healthcare facilities need better standardized systems, processes, and tools to improve documentation and coding for malnutrition. We would again like to thank Junum for its support of this educational offering. And here are some references. Thank you and have a good day.